Okay, so we're going to talk about the normal distribution and its properties and look at a couple of uh, exam style questions to see how it all works. Now, most natural events like uh, the heights of people, uh, the heights of adults, uh, the lengths of leaves on a tree, uh, the time it takes to uh, travel uh, certain journeys, um, if you've plotted a large sample of those, then they'll produce this general kind of curve. So if we took, um, so I say, the heights of... Uh, a large sample of people, uh, say some adult uh, females, then it's quite logical that you'd have an average height and there'd be some smaller people and there'd be some taller people and if we drew all of those data on a graph where we're plotting the relative frequency against the height then it would have this kind of shape, fairly symmetrical where there'd be the same mean value, the same mode value, and the same median value. And there'd be a symmetry property around that, so it'd be a symmetrical kind of shape. Um, but when we do the normal distribution, uh, we associate it with samples. So we have to get used to a new symbol for sample mean. So this mu is the sample mean. And the x is just simply saying it's some distribution. So that could be height, it could be length, it could be the capacity of an object. Uh, so it's just the measure of the distribution, the spread of it. And at the end of the, case, at the, end of the day, the normal distribution is uh, demonstrating how spread out your information is, uh, say with this central point here, uh, the sample mean, and the symmetry property. Now what um, this does allow us to do as statisticians is we can consider how the uh, spread of the data is measured using the standard deviation. So basically, if we go one standard deviation above the mean and one standard deviation below the mean, then for a normal distribution, we would find that roughly around 68% of the data is within that boundary. So we need to be familiar with that kind of fact. But there are also some other properties of the normal distribution that we need to be familiar with. We can go two standard deviations either side of the mean point. So if we go two standard deviations above the sample mean and two standard deviations below the sample mean, then we find that 95% of a normal distribution uh, set of data is within there. So 95% of the data is there. Now because of the symmetry property, of course, then if we just look at this portion here, then it must be a half of the 95% between the two standard deviations, either side of the mean. So for this particular section here, we would say it contains 47.5% of the data. And one of the more important properties is to look at what happens when you go three standard deviations from the mean point. So if I went three standard deviations below the sample mean and three standard deviations above the sample mean, then this, for a normal distributed set of data, is covering 99.8% of the population. Now, the, again, the symmetry property tells me that half of that, so 49. Point 9% would be this side of the mean and 49.9% with this side of the mean. But it's really important that you understand again some language. We talk about this being the tail of the normal distribution. And if you notice the graph doesn't go and meet the actual axes because there's always the potential that there'll be a small amount of data and we can see from here we're only talking about 0.2% for either end of the tails. So at this side, we're talking roughly around 0.1% of the data and 0.1% of the data because of the symmetry properties again. And so therefore, there's a very small chance that there might be something beyond the three standard deviations, but we're not sure where it is. It could be an outlier, it could be a really extreme value. So we always make sure that the normal distribution curve tails down, but it doesn't actually touch the axes because, as I say, there's that potential for something to be outside that value. Small, very small chance. Now, when I mention chance, this in a way is really what 
the normal distribution will be interpreted as uh, when you're looking at uh, talking about maybe quality control or real applications of this uh, distribution and what we're saying really is that if we've taken a sample and we've plotted some data and it's a large enough sample to do this and we've noticed that it's a kind of a normal distribution then what we're saying is there's a 68% chance of the data being between these two values the mean plus the one standard deviation and the mean take away one standard deviation for this distribution if we look at the two standard deviations either side of the mean then there's a 95% chance of the data in here and eventually we'll talk about confidence and for this particular distribution if it's found to be normal distribution then we can say that it's got a 95% chance of being within these two boundaries so what does this mean overall then? Well, if we just summarize when you do a question or you're talking about or you do some control assessment and you come to the summary in your mind that it's a normal distribution you're dealing with then ideally you would plot the bell shape and you would look at the one standard deviation either side, the two standard deviations either side and the three standard deviations either side. Uh, just as basically to give you some idea of how confident you can be that your data will be between two values for 95% of the data or between these two values for 99.8% of the data. So let's have a look how it works in the exam situation. So they're talking here about the normal distributions of A and B uh, represent uh, the weights of sacks. So some companies done some sampling and they've measured the weights of some sacks and they've uh, found that the mean value, the sample mean was 20 kilograms and the standard deviation was 4 kilograms. So what that uh, means that if I want to plot a normal distribution then I always look at the sample mean plus 3 standard deviations and the sample mean take away three standard deviations to know where the tails of the normal distribution curves are going to be. So for distribution A we can see that we've got a mean of 20 and we're going to add on three lots of the standard deviation. So 3 times 4 is 12, add that to that, so 32. And for take away it's going to be the mean take away that 12, so 8. And for distribution B we can see that it's going to be 28 plus 3 times 6, so 3, 6 is 18, 38, 46, and the other tail, 28, take away 3 times 6, so 10. It's asking us to sketch on the same axes the normal distributions. So what it's telling us really is that we're going to end up sketching a bell shape, and we're going to have plotted where the tails are and where the mean is to get the symmetry property of the, the graph. At GCSE level we don't need to worry about the height of the uh, bell. What we've got to recognize of course is that the area under a normal distribution bell won't change for any distribution. It's just going to be the height of the bell will change. So if I have a, a fairly widespread uh, set of data then the bell might be stretched out and then if I have a smaller standard deviation then because the area has got to remain the same then the height of the bell will be taller because uh, say it's about the area underneath representing the data. So when it's asking us to sketch these two then we draw an axis and we've now worked out what our uh, smallest value on here is going to be is 8 and our largest value is going to be 46 so we might go 0, 10, 20, 30, 40 and of course we're talking about kilograms, so we'd have our unit down here, so it's the distribution of the weights. Um, so for A, uh, it's telling us it's got a mean of 20, so again we're not um, worried where the height is, we just like, plot a point, and it's how the other one's going to be relative to that that counts. So look at the tails, so for A the tail was 8, so not on the axes remember, just close to it, so about 8, and for the upper tail, 32. So this means this means that this bell, and again you try your best you can to kind of do the symmetry and come down to your end tail. So that's the distribution A. So it's quite important obviously like with most graphs and charts you label, so that's for A. And then for B, uh, we were told it had a mean of 28, 
and a larger standard deviation of 6. So in other words, this distribution for B is going to be more spread out. So that means that the normal distribution bell is going to be stretched so the height of it lowers down. So at 28, uh, we're going to plot the mean, but it's going to be lower than the previous uh, height in terms of the top of the bell, the peak. Uh, the tail was at 10 and the other tail was at uh, 46 so we need to have drawn our scale a bit bigger so 46 and again we should try our best to get that kind of bell shape in uh, so again that's for B uh, the main thing to remember is that the heights have to be relative to each other depending on the spread of the data. Uh, the narrower the spread, the smaller the standard deviation, then the taller the peak. Um, the larger the standard deviation, the more spread out the data, so the lower the peak compared to another distribution. The other kind of questions they ask you on standard deviation, well, they talk about um, the normal distribution here, what percentage of the value should lie between within two standard deviations. Well, again, you've got to re remember that the bell shape, two standard deviations below the mean, sample mean, two standard deviations above the sample mean, that covers 95% of your data. So when it's saying here what percentage of the values are within two standard deviations of the mean, then we're going to say 95%. And between three standard deviations, then again we need to remember the bell and if we go three standard deviations then we're really talking in that uh, the tail ends so take away three standard deviations plus three standard deviations then underneath this curve it contains 99.8 percent of the data next question is uh, kind of a typical application so we've got a peanut factory here it's producing um, some bags and this kind of company would take a sample of the uh, bags so that it can look at the uh, accuracy of the packing line to make sure that it's uh, actually selling the product uh, the right weight and uh, the packing line's not uh, putting too many peanuts in so obviously losing product and uh, losing profit or it's not putting in too less so obviously trading standards would have a go at them uh, for underselling so they've got a mean here of 64 and a standard deviation of 2. We've got to sketch the distribution including the um, an indication of where most bags will lie. Well that's most bags is implying the 99.8 percent figure. So when it's saying sketch then we're going to draw an axis and we're going to work out our tail values and my recommendation is that when you do this you're better off doing the one standard deviation then you do the two standard deviations and then the three standard deviations and again you should be doing it um, below as well so minus the one standard deviation minus two standard deviations and minus three standard deviations um, this is going to help us particularly with part two of the question but uh, forget these values then so 64 plus one standard deviation 66 um, two standard deviations well I told us it was two so two twos are four add it on to 68 and three twos are six add it on to 70 and for going below, um, take away the 2, so 62, take away another 2, 60, take away another 2, 58. So we know that the tails are going to be at 58, that's the lower tail, and the upper tail is going to be at 70. And halfway between was the 64. Again, don't worry about the height, it's literally just that you're showing that you understand that it's a normal distribution, so it's about a bell shape, and so it's about a bell shape, and we're trying to make sure it looks reasonably symmetrical. So we put our mean point down and we put the other values in so at one standard deviation we were at 62 
at two standard deviations we were at 60 and above we went to 66 and we went to 68. So when it's saying sketch distribution indicating the values which most bags lie then of course they're expecting you to have got the tail ends in the correct positions at 58 and 70. It then says finding the probability of the bag of peanuts being more than 60 grams. The more than then we're looking at this portion of the graph. So this was the mean take away two standard deviations. So we've got to realize that the whole graph, the whole distribution would be 100%. So the whole distribution is represented by 100%. Well, if we're going to this end, then we've gone beyond the two standard deviation, which if you remember for two standard deviations are below and two standard deviations above, it represented 95% of the data. So that means this side and this side must represent 5%. Symmetry property tells me that this bit here, around the boundary of 60, represents 2.5%. So all of this must be the 100% minus the two and a half percent that's below 60 grams so our answer to the question is 97.5 percent lie above 60 grams so that's a summary of the lesson on distributions and the normal distribution in particular here and we've got to be able to use this bell-shaped curve and work out the probability of events um, through using the idea of two standard deviations being 95% of the data and three standard deviations around the mean point being 99.8% of the data.